Hi. Uh, yeah. So, hello. Hi. To start off with, would you like to say your name and where you are? Yes, uh, I'm uh, Marina. I'm from uh, Bulgaria and currently in Sofia. This is the capital of Bulgaria. It's uh, in the, it's, it's in Europe, in the Balkans, <laughs> it's, to be more specific. <laughs> yes, I actually, I have been to Bulgaria, which is interesting. <laughs> so, wow, yeah. uh, in Sofia or other city? It was 20 years ago. I was, oh, I was a student, but yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was far off. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, so <laughs> the first question is, now I know where you are. Who are you? Who are you as a human being? And that can be, as you know, anything you want to share about your values, your passions, qualities about yourself, whatever you'd like. Mm -hmm. uh, I will start with what I have already discovered because I think uh, I, I really uh, like this gestalt idea that we are work in progress and that we are always um, in connection with the environment and the people and uh, we are in, in connection with something. So what I discovered based on my connections is uh, uh, I'm... Um, I'm passionate and emotional person. Uh, that's a woman. I, let's start with, with that. I'm a, a also discovering this. I'm a woman and a, a with a deep emotions, uh, feeling deeply, and at the same time, um, intense and, um, and passionate. And um, this is something really that I've discovered for myself. Also, I've discovered recently that I have some kind of a, not some kind, but of a leadership uh, um, skills and potential and um, desire to, um, to motivate and to inspire, not only to support and, um, and help, so this is my, uh, uh, this is uh, our two sides of me that are now becoming to dance together, uh, more of a be, being more inspiring and motivating and teaching. And on, uh, on one side and on the other side, being present, supportive, emotional, and understanding emotions and connecting. Um, yeah, I love connecting. Uh, connection is important for me. Mm -hmm. And what would you say are some of your core or central values in your life? Um, connection, it's definitely important and value. Um, um, a fairness. Uh, between uh, people, um, collaboration, um, and also tolerance uh, for differences. Um, yes. Mm. And is there a way that you would like to talk about that those values became important for you or how you hold them in your life? Um, the way they became important is, uh, it's true, the place uh, in Sofia, Bulgaria, Balkans, uh, definitely I could uh, see that our culture is uh, um, leaning towards patriarchy and uh, leaning towards uh, uh, male dominance and society and and, um, and um, more like like this side and I have uh, experienced it as a, also in my personal life and family and my grandfather and grandmother as a way of connecting was uh, uh, more like male um, dominant and still the, the women are very strong and, and hardworking and uh, giving um, and supporting 
but in the expense uh, of themselves. So, so that's what I observed and it kind of uh, was something that uh, shaped me in a way. And, uh, and now it's important for me to, to keep this uh, balance, to uh, support uh, women in this um, becoming more connected with themselves and their needs and, and, and still uh, keeping the collaboration with men, not hating, not uh, uh, going against, but in this, in this process of I'm connecting with myself and connecting with other and environment. So, yeah. So thinking a bit more about your own history, it, would you say that there is an event that comes to mind or more about a set of circumstances in your life that has really shaped you? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, I was uh, thinking about these questions uh, because I've listened to other interviews and um, there are so many. I, uh, and still I have something that realized that it's really important is because uh, is that I uh, grown up uh, near nature. So my grandparents, uh, they, had, uh, they lived in a house near our city. And uh, with my sister, we spent our summers there, uh, which was three months, basically, um, between kindergartens, uh, when we are going to kindergartens, and after that in schools. So we spent three months uh in the house and we have domestic animals so we have goats chickens pig and i've realized that this experience shaped me in a way that i was really connected with with nature cycles i mean i was a uh, uh, part of um uh for example i was in the house when uh, we know well, how to say for for christmas uh you have to kill a pig so you have to eat it, yeah, that's mm -hmm. part of life. And it was part of my life. I mean, I, I could uh, connect with animals. I, I was hugging uh, uh, baby goats because they're very friendly and lovable, <laughs> really lovable animals. And I think that being around such a um, pure um, instinctual love like the baby animals have, uh, really shaped me. And at the same time, being around, uh, have to kill them and eat them. <laughs> also kind of, uh, I think that brings some polarities that are in me, in a way, very uh, natural, naturally in me, mm -hmm. uh, like cycles, life, death. And um, yeah, that's, that shaped me. I have the uh, fortunate to um, climbed trees, to, to run around, to um, take care of food, I mean, gardens, uh, tomatoes, and, and, and really eat uh, vegetables that are from the ground, which is, yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that definitely shaped me. Uh, what shaped me also is, um, in, in, the, in my family environment, we don't uh, talk about uh, uh, awareness of feelings. So uh, this connection of let's say what's happening with you, let's say present. So what shaped me is the lack of presence. Uh, a lot of emotions that were out of borders from my mother mm, uh, coming up and uh, and that shaped me because I, I have this, um, a lot of uh, emotions and intensity and uh, learned, of course, in my Gestalt training and therapy to have a, a borders and to have a, a, a way to stay with them and, and use my body as a, as a way to, to structure and, and have them in me. Uh, so yeah, this is shaped me, of course, uh, a lot of, difficulties, personal difficulties in my family and um, alcohol and uh, um, yeah, this lack of presence to, to talk, to, to go deeper, to explore. So it was more taking care, um, 
of food, of uh, uh, clothes, of uh, education. Uh, and still there were some moments that we can connect through food. I mean, I was watching my mother cooking and mm -hmm. making uh, banitsa, these traditional dishes here, and other dishes. So that was uh, this precious moment of love where we don't talk about love, but we feel, I feel it. Mm -hmm. It's in the air, it's there, it's something that we share, mm -hmm. but we don't have the words to say, to explore it more, to, okay, to, to, to feel it in the body and, and, and keep it in the body, so to, mm -hmm. uh, to be more talked over, I mean, mm -hmm. like, share, yeah. share through words also. Yeah. yeah. So would you say that there was a particular person in your history or in your present mm -hmm. who has mm -hmm. been a major influence for you? Oh, a lot of uh, people. Um, a lot of people come to my mind. Some I don't remember their names, <laughs> some I do. For example, one uh, person was my teacher, English, my uh, English teacher when I was, um, oh, uh, when you start high school, I mean, eighth grade is this, oh, okay, when I'm 15 and mm -hmm. in school, our English teacher, we had a lot of English lessons and he was very interesting person because he was, I mean, he was very, uh, what I remember is the feeling, a feeling of I'm accepted, feeling mm -hmm. we are all accepted as a group. Uh, he um, um, invited us to write a note for each of our classmates uh, before we finish school and go to summer vacation, uh, we write uh, each of us, write a note to each of us. So I write for, for all the classmates mm -hmm. and they write for me. And I keep these notes. Mm -hmm. And yes, and these notes are um, moments of receiving uh, good feelings and stuff that we don't talk about. I like you, or I like this in you, or, uh, this is my impression for you. We don't talk about this. <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. remember uh, in, in such a in school. Um, so it was nice to receive um, warm words, warm energy put in words, and I keep them. Yes, that's uh, that's something I really value. I, and this person, I also value him. And when I remember him, I send him a good energy and said, because he was only for one year and I wasn't so much aware. And it was like something in, in one year, mm -hmm. I think it, it gave me something really that now I could be aware of mm -hmm. that there is kindness and um, invitation to share good feelings, invitation to connect. So. This yeah, there's, important. there's language. It's amazing. Yeah. I'm not surprised, but it's amazing how many people mention teachers yes. when I ask and that also question. English. I mean, mm -hmm. oh my God, I learned English be probably because I felt uh, safe and I'm smart also, mm -hmm. but still this was very motivating for me. And English, it, I mean, this is a gift for my life that shaped me and still supporting to shape me because uh, of uh, Gestalt training was in English and mm -hmm. I wouldn't participate if I don't know English. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's English, mm -hmm. very important. Mm -hmm. Okay. And connect, so you, connect, go ahead. to connect with you, I have to know English, so. I would be very slow learning Bulgarian at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. You said one of the first things you said was about being a woman. So I'm curious how you experience yourself or how you understand yourself as a woman or in gender. Mm. I experience it uh, uh, a womanhood through body, uh, through my body and my uh, cycles. Mm -hmm. So I'm more uh, aware of this, uh, um, of my cycle, of um, menstruational cycle, I mean. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I have, um, I, I experience myself that I'm different in different parts of the cycle. 
and uh, I'm noticing that there is a um, this is something that's important and I realize this and now I'm in connection with this so it's this it's also um, I can't say, uh, put it that that's a woman thing uh, I, uh, when I say a woman thing, I say I, uh, I connect it with body. So I have a woman body. This is something I have to take care. This is something I have to keep in mind. This is something, um, this connection I make with my, myself is connection with my body and my emotions and my feelings. But uh, I know that people could have deep feelings. They could be a man also. Mm -hmm. I mean, they could have deep feelings and understanding and collaboration and it, it's not a woman thing. The woman thing, I, for me, it's more of a um, valuing and taking care of that I have a cycle in me, uh, that my body is changing for, you could say four phases of the, of the cycle. And, uh, and that's different from the male body. Okay. Because the male body doesn't have a, a monthly cycle. We all, as a humans, have 24, uh, 24 hour cycle. I mean, we, we are awake and we sleep. But mm -hmm. additional to that, I have more four faces. And this is something that shapes me as a, as a, as a woman here in the in, in earth. Not like a personal qualities, but even on this basic, basic uh, level. What's a, what's a woman? Okay. And also, the, when I go to this basic level, I connect with um, openness of accepting, of um, fulfillment, of, of this kind of deep needs that uh, when I go to, to my body and, and connect deeply with this, that's what's come up. And then, so of course, another, mm -hmm. makeup and stuff like this and they are not, again, they're not women. I mean, men could also use it and they use it very well. And it's not, it's not something mm -hmm. like this. Mm. And when I uh, go deeper of this basic stuff, then I come to me who I am. Like, uh, am I emotional? Because a woman could be, uh, of course, we are all emotional. A woman could be more, uh, what, what shapes her in the, in the her environment. I mean, it could be more ambitious or uh, more structured. It's a flavors, flavors mm -hmm. of characteristics. And I'm also um, uh, astrology, uh, love, love astrology, psychological astrology. So everything about science and that gives a lot of uh, characteristics to talk about. And we all possess them. Mm -hmm. But still, we have this hardware that it's that it's there and it's it's a factor, mm -hmm. and okay. in different it's kind of different from the male hardware because we we are not the same. I mean, it's mm -hmm. obvious in this mm -hmm. hardware situation, this body difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, you know, kind of thinking about some of my trans friends and my non-binary friends and but I mean, it's it's a there are some things on a biological level and just even the sense of you know being comfortable in this body or feeling like something needs to change in this body for me to be comfortable yes it's, yes. it's an interesting experience so I, I was going to ask you um, about your age as well, how you are mm -hmm. experiencing this time in your life. Now I'm wondering if I should ask about you oh, know, okay. I'm your, a, your I'm sign 36. and being born in this in uh, that particular. I'm I'm, uh, yeah, my sign is Leo, but it's, it's the beginning of a, of a discussion because uh, uh, you like astrology also, you know something about it? No, I'm, I'm, oh, okay. I mean, so I know I'm a cancer, but I'm kind of just kidding. I don't want to make but fun you, of anything. You know but. only this. Okay, so... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just wondering yeah. about, I mean, your age and your experience of this time in your life, if that's, you know, how that is for you. Oh, well, I'm uh, uh, 36 uh, and uh, I got uh, married last year, uh, last summer, hmm. uh, during uh, 
covered uh, COVID polls, we could say with a small gathering and um, and uh, yeah, I'm in a relationship for six years from now, and this is the the relationship that also really shaped me. Um, of feeling safe and connected and experiencing myself more as a, um, as a woman, with a partner, with partnership. So that's what's happening currently in my life. It's, um, it's this um, transition of uh, me, part of a family, of my family as a, with my partner. Okay. So this is this is a different question obviously for everyone depending where you are you know in the social world but how do you understand power and privilege in your life oh uh, i mean i feel myself as a, a privilege i feel this that i have a privilege i um this topic came up uh, from uh, my uh, trainers in the Gestalt Therapy France. And he uh, uh, shared with us that he is uh, training also in, uh, oh, where well, it was, in Asia. In Nepal? I, yes. And, um, and he said that he realized uh, that how privileged he is, that he comes from uh, Western Europe and, and, and these th things. And they really, clicked in me. So I don't know what, uh, um, how I use this power uh, or this privilege um, for good, for example. Uh, I'm not such an, uh, I'm not in the activist side. Uh, I, I understand it like this. And also uh, um, I'm still building connection with my power. Hmm. I'm still um, uh, in the process of really allowing myself to connect through my power, not through my traumas, because I see a lot of in here, in uh, in Sofia, and in the therapy communities, I, I, I uh, have uh, observations that we are used to connect through difficulties, through what you've gone through uh, painfully, through pain. Mm which of course there is the it's the needs space for pain and space for uh difficulties and in in recognition in this part of healing and now in in my in my life now i'm thinking more about how to connect also through my power hmm. and also to allow others to connect through their powers because we all have some kind of power privilege is something I, can, I, I see difference. I mean, privileges if you have a family that has um, uh, access to resources, uh, money, or, or, or basically more of, of money or something, uh, place to live that is mm -hmm. in a more um, safe environment. Everything is, is a privilege. So, um, did I answer the question? I mean, yeah, yeah. I, no, I no, see it's... this difference, and um, I'm more uh, I'm supporting because my practice is connected with women. I work with women. I work mm -hmm. with women to connect with themselves, their feelings. Basically, what was my experience <laughs> and my journey, um, and to make difference between what is a healthy relationship and unhealthy relationship. Uh, what connection, uh, what are my needs and feelings and understanding basically yourself mm -hmm. and get to know yourself. And this is connected with power. So it is. I, I, I have power, I, in every degree we have power. So I, I see it like this and still it's difficult for me to be on this side of, uh, of power and not, and, and not so because it's very easy for me to sleep and, and talk about difficulties and pain and um, and connect with people that talk about their pain and their difficulties. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that it's deep, but I think also that deepness is not 
only about talking mm -hmm. about this. Yeah. Okay. And this is something that I think it's new and it's uh, growing and developing because we have a lot of pain and trauma also. In my family, I had transgenerational trauma. Here I see it and work with women. Basically, to become a therapist, you have to experience some kind of painful experience. I think usually, it's kind of usually that's uh, why people tend to go CV. to therapy. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, I kind of. I don't want to generalize for everybody and everything. I'm not this kind of person because I don't know everybody and everything. Mm -hmm. I just, as a sense, or maybe to support my story and said, okay, if I, I to be a, a good therapist, I have started my uh, my training and uh, at uh, two years old, and <laughs> since now I'm uh, in a training process. <laughs> so mm -hmm. maybe this is more supporting me. <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't, it's not on the list of questions like, hey, what's your trauma? <laughs> it's, yeah. I don't think that's okay. It's something that you don't talk about and still it's difficult to talk uh, um, to talk about things that you enjoy in your life. That may be difficult for me. I, let's mm -hmm. start with this. Of course, it's, uh, it's in me, but also I see it in the environment. Like not to be, brag yourself or to mm -hmm. share uh, uh, more what really you like or it's exciting you or you love so but it's normal because we have uh, I am I now I realize we have some when you can't speak about yourself and your feelings you don't shoot uh, only one side I mean if you shut uh, the side that it's a pain and it's a difficulties mm -hmm. you shut the other side so maybe it's a it's an organic process in me I, I open up and uh, explore my pain and my suffering and my difficulties that I experience. And now there is a space to explore actually what is excites me, what I love, what good happening in my life, and actually what is good happening in my past. Mm -hmm. That's a really precious space because I didn't see my past. A long time I didn't see my past. I have a good experience. And now mm. I, I, I see that I have, and mm -hmm. I have the difficulties and the pain. Mm -hmm. And they can both live and be there. Mm -hmm. okay. so and that's it, empowering. It also. is. It gives, it gives you things to work from, right? Yeah. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, talking about pain and trauma and emotions, how did you come to Gestalt therapy? How did you find Gestalt? Oh, yes. That's uh, one of my lovely stories in my life. <laughs> okay. So I was, uh, first uh, uh, I graduated psychology when I finished my high school at 18 years old. I actually, I, I, didn't, I didn't know what to do and at this time. I know I have to continue my study because I just know, know it. And maybe because also the family, uh, I come from uh, my parents really uh, value education. And, um, and I was sitting in a mountain uh, in, a, in a rock. And for the first time, I really pray like, I don't know what to do. Please God, I'm not, I'm not a religious person. I was so desperate of not knowing what to study. I, I, I studied more engineering specialties and I didn't want to continue with this uh, uh, mathematics and stuff. I just didn't want to, to, to be there. And I, I like with this energy, I said, I, I can't do this. Please give me a sign what to study, what to, to do. And it came up psychology. Yeah, that, that's one of my really precious and very spiritual experience with no woohoo stuff, just really, maybe because I really ask deeply mm -hmm. and the answer comes. So it's not answer from outside, but uh, some answer comes, I, psychology. And I make this huge shift and uh, fortunately uh, managed to go and study psychology. And then I worked 10 years as a human resources because I didn't have the um, self-support 
and environment support to be a psychologist, really to practice, to support people, to, to, okay. deep, to dive deeper in this uh, profession. And um, I, I worked as an HR in a corporate uh, sex, uh, sector, and uh, I had a relationship uh, six years that I wasn't happy and in the age of 30, I um, separated with my partner basically and I started my new life. And I started, yes, for the first time to live alone also because for my parents, poof, partner. So no space for exploration, what I am, what I like, what I value, no, just go there, be, uh, have a job, educate, have a partner. Tuck, tuck, mm. tuck, everything perfect. <laughs> but I, I actually am very grateful for my um, uh, HR job uh, because I worked in an environment that actually was very, um, it was mainly with men because it, it was in sales. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but they were very respectful. And I had a key position there as an HR. So HR department was a department that had actually a key position. And for the first time I experienced that I'm valued, I'm important, I'm someone that uh, can have an opinion and that opinion is, uh, is to uh, next to the manager uh, opinion and it's, it's a important opinion and you can't just roll over, oh, you're an HR, we will do whatever we want. And um, that's where I realized I'm an inspiring person. I could connect easily. People start trusting me, telling me um, they feel good when they're around me. And, and that, that's a nice um, nourishment. And it mm -hmm. takes time, four years I spent. And, uh, and this nourishment gave me the, the strength to leave my partner. Nothing till this time of therapy and gestalt and everything. 30 years old, I uh, started living alone and um, I connected with my previous experience of psychology and I said, okay, I have now the money. I have, I have a good money because corporate good money, I have a car. So now I'm free, I have where to live, I live alone, I have money, I have car. Let's go back and do what I love. <laughs> and I started researching in internet and end up finding uh, Irina Kiryakova, which is actually the person that uh, through her, I fall in love with Gestalt because she made a, a training, not to go in details, but spending time with her during her training, it was positive psychotherapy training basics. So I just decided to to come back to psychology and to see if this will be way to even leave my job and transition and start uh, working uh, with clients. And um, yeah, the way she talks about the training, the people that she meets in the training, I, I, I felt it, I felt collaboration, I felt understanding, I felt um, presence, um, connection, um, deep, deepness and connection with nature and life. Mm -hmm. And when there were opening for Gestalt training, I signed up for it. Hmm. Yeah, and that's how I... That's how you got there. Yeah. But yeah. It, it's important. I mean, that list that you made of, I have freedom, I have the money, I have a car, I have independence. That, that's it takes a lot to be able to get into that gestalt yes. space yeah yes <laughs> for me it was like this uh -huh. it wasn't a, i wasn't able to do the uh, also we didn't have a gestalt a gestalt yeah. in bulgaria it's new so it's mm -hmm. 10 years so maybe more 12 uh, mm -hmm. yeah, or 15 years let's say i'm the third um group that mm -hmm. graduated now, fourth group graduated this year, so we have all new groups coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, interesting. So how did Gestalt affect you as a person? Mm -hmm. I think the, 
I don't think it gestalt. I don't know okay. what gestalt affect me, but the people in the training affect me. The trainers affect me. Uh, the uh, trainers from Czech Republic we have, from uh, Amsterdam, uh, uh, and, and that experience, first to be with a woman and men that have presence, from Greece also, that have presence, that comes from different cultures, that um, have experience, 20 years of doing this. Basically, that's very, I see this and I said, okay, you, you work these 20 years, that's possible. And, and most of them started actually uh, 30 years old or around this mm -hmm. age, not, not so young, because it, you have, you really need to have some experience and resources. So it affects me in a way to, as I said, to become more grounded, to uh, have um, more awareness of my emotions, of my feelings, of my body sensations, um, to feel that I belong because it's a four-year training group with uh, personal experience and knowledge. Um, Um, it gave me a solid ground. Hmm. The attitude of, and, and I like that every person are, are different because I, re, I have it, I also have it in me from childhood, this um, inclusiveness. I mean, I, I, I'm okay with different people. I don't have much experience with uh, uh, as a sexuality, different people like uh, uh, gays and transgenders. I don't have this in my as a as a close friends, it, but in a different cultures and different nationalities and different colors, are, it's something I appreciate to to be around and to have this uh, um, diversity. Mm -hmm. So people in my group, they affect me a lot because it's a intimacy that. I, I, I experienced and intimacy in the healthy side, intimacy mm -hmm. of uh, this is what I feel, this is what you feel, we could be different, the, this uh, idea of dialogue, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, not uh, uh, because I, I come more of a surviving side, in the surviving side there have to be one who wins and one who loses, and this idea that there is no such thing, uh, and also corporate also bring mm -hmm. this to me, sales and uh, this com com competitiveness and uh, results striving. And now I'm in a place where it's uh, uh, feel your feet, <laughs> connect with your body, what's happening in you, and how to, when to express myself. And it's a lot. I mean, it's, it's a, um, growing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what were the challenges that you've run into? Either doing the training, being a therapist, or taking this work to other places? What are some of the challenges? Oh, challenges. Uh, a lot of challenges. I, I, I wasn't uh, um, used to be in an environment that supports expressing, talking, uh, um, being uh, you. So I wasn't, um, I was uh, skeptical and I was scared and I was like, uh -huh, okay, come on. I'm not sure I want to talk about me. Let's see the group. And when the group of people started to share personal stuff, I felt overwhelmed mm -hmm. because I was always putting it inside me. I, I, I have this challenge in me to, to take things in, to put things in and um, and that's heavy sometimes. And I have, I, I, I really experienced in the first year of, of uh, group therapy, I experienced health issues. I mean, I, I was sick from, from training because mm -hmm. I uh, was so afraid to let myself out and to express myself. I was so afraid, so uh, uh, um, scared that I will be judged and something bad will happen to me if I do this or I will be uh, it's not interested or not important because 
this is was very challenging to um, to start trusting myself and trusting colleagues and group and and basically mostly trusting myself I can take care of myself and that's the most challenging for me as a therapist now this uh, field that we work with the field of pain and suffering mostly there of course are the inspiring and uh, yeah, and inspiring and, and so touching sight and self-awareness side that also is present and still the more is pain suffering and um, and where is this um, and, and yes how to take care of myself also there mm -hmm. and uh, now I'm I'm connecting with questions really with how much clients I should work mm -hmm. not I could work I could work yes. a lot but what what should <clears throat> I with how much clients I should work to be to keep my sanity and to have mm -hmm. energy for my partner mm -hmm. and uh, now I'm uh, uh, making change in my consultations is uh, going from 60 minutes to 50 minutes also because of this to to mm -hmm. reserve my energy to have some caring for me. So this is um, this is uh, challenging. Mm -hmm. It's challenging for me to be um, honest therapist uh, and somehow direct, not honest, direct therapist, mm -hmm. because I want more to support, to take care, to understand. And now I'm realizing that this is more of an idea of me. This is not my real me. My real me, it's more direct sometimes or teaching sometimes or, um, and I'm coming to an agreement with me that I'm this kind of person. I'm not actually so much caring and supportive, even though I am caring mm -hmm. and supportive, but that's not home. And yeah. to, to bring this part in the therapy, this is my challenge. And it, it has some not good moments of telling something to clients that are not so um, more impulsively, not so much mm -hmm. of a, from a place of awareness and, and connectness with me and uh, of awareness where our relationship is. Okay. So the other side of that, what would you say are some of your highlights? What are some of those experiences, either as a therapist or in your training or in some other part of your life that you feel are a peak experience? Yeah, a peak experience, I mean, like, like an emotional experience, like intense? It, just, it, it could be, or it could be something very small that you just feel has stayed with you or transcends in some way. I mean, maybe sort of like when you get the word psychology, when you're sitting on a mountain. You know. mm -hmm. Have you had any particular moments of clarity or? Mm, I have a, a, a moment. When I was writing my Gestalt paper, we call it here Gestalt paper to uh, finish our training. Um, I, I was inspired by a client that I worked with and uh, I, with her, I experienced for the first time really being present mm -hmm. and being present for a woman that shows her emotions and not going, being present, not thinking, am I doing enough? Is that okay? Is this what I have to do? Or I have to say something to calm her down because that's from, from my past. We have to calm down, we have to uh, 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 come up with these old emotions and, and, and to be tuned out and, and calm down and, and just calm down and stuff like this. And now I'm experiencing this was really precious moment for me, not coming, calming down, but uh, coming in being present and really experience the effect and influence I have on other human beings, just being there. And 
uh, and not yes being there uh, and also what was also very precious for me was that being there it comes up the idea just to uh, come closer and just to be with her physically to touch her to touch her hand and I of course uh, make this risky move because it was in the beginning of my practice and I said, would you like me to come close? I have this uh, an idea uh, and she said yes and I take her hand and she started to cry with this deep relief of crying that's so freeing and so deeply connecting with you and that is uh, something that yeah, still touches me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, a, a, I think it's a summary point of all that happens mm -hmm. in the training with the people, all oh, this sunlight is coming. Okay. Yeah, as you were starting to talk, I mean, you were being illuminated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. So, yeah, that was the, um, of the beginning of realizing that being there for someone, being present, um, being curious and risking to be to even explore more closeness, it's important. Uh, and it was in the, at the same point, it was something that was finished because if I was able to do that, I come also to a lot, to a long journey mm -hmm. to appreciate this side of, of life. I mean, it's more on the woman side, we say, uh, it's certainly being more in you and present and loving and uh, nurturing. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I would drop this woman, man. I would, it's side of life. It's part mm -hmm. of, of, of life. So. Mm -hmm. hmm. so do you feel, I mean, you mentioned some obstacles to being in the training. But do you feel like you're part of a Gestalt community? Does that phrase mean anything to you? Oh, yes. Yes. Um, How is that for you? Uh, for me, that is, uh, uh, we have uh, a Gestalt associations. Mm -hmm. So you can be part of it. And it's, um, uh, and that, that the community, we are, we are actually in the process of building community of, um, Actually, we have a community. I mean, we, we are we we we, we have a, um, a lot of people that have now trained in Gestalt therapy. So we are connected together through this association. So, and through this association, we have monthly meetings, uh, and um, we have uh, other uh, initiatives. Also, also I have an intervision group with some of the people that uh, graduated in the training. So mm -hmm. we are five and uh, yeah, five, five or six with me, uh, no, five with me. And we meet also regularly. So this is also community. Uh, I have a group supervision. So that's a community and I have a personal supervision. So, mm -hmm. and I have uh, your channel. So I kind of, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I want if I want to dive deeper and, and see from different uh, places and, and skin color and culture, I just put some of uh, listen your interviews and I'm each time, oh yes. Yeah. And I see something in common. I mean, I can't put it in words. It's kind of an energy. I don't feel it in other um so much present in other psychologicals, but I don't have such experience with different, with different practices. I mean, Gestalt actually has so much in it. Mm -hmm. I think it's based on the person. It's not, it's not so much something like so deeply in common. Yeah, cycles. Of contact is cycle of life. I mean, so it's it's extracted from life. So it's something that we all have and understand. But maybe field theory is something that is so more special to, to Gestalt and, and other things, but 
it's more of, of that you ha you can include yourself with everything you are and you know and yeah thank you thank you so i am wondering this is really my last question is what's next for you and what do you think is next for gestalt from your perspective mm -hmm. Oh, what's next? Uh, hmm. In as a therapist, what what's next is uh, for me is to to include again because I, I I have put it in my practice. Uh, I'm doing webinars and teachings and inspirational things, and now I'm more on the therapy side, and I see that. Uh, I need to make this balance. So I have to uh, bring again my uh, love for teaching and explaining, explaining our bodies, explaining our nervous system, explaining um, how to connect with a partner and have a, a fulfilling partnership and explaining what is unhealthy and what's healthy because this has some, it supports uh, mm -hmm. So this is what I, I would like to, to bring in more. Also, um, for me, I'm uh, more in uh, taking more active role in our associations because in our associations, it's uh, uh, in a horizontal style. So you can participate, you can join with ideas and with, uh, um, with uh, developing and caring for the growing of the association. So this is something I... I also would like to be part of uh, because being in the therapy room, it's, sometimes it's lonely. Mm -hmm. And I, I would like to, maybe I have this um, uh, uh, from my corporate side, this being in a team and uh, making projects. And uh, so this is what I am taking uh, Space. And for the Gestalt, I mean, I'm, I, I think I'm um, uh, in, I could say I'm a beginner. So mm -hmm. for me to, to talk about what is going on in, in, in some future and some vision, um, I don't feel that I, I, I have an idea or vision because I'm I'm beginner. I'm um, connecting and listening lectures of different Gestalt, uh, uh, key Gestalt uh, therapists or uh, people that are with, uh, with prestige of um, theory and, and building visions. So I'm more in connecting with these people and, and, and seeing so different visions and, and, and again, so much space for everything to be there. Mm -hmm. So I think it will be like this, it will be more in a, uh, in, in this in this idea of uh, collaboration of different ideas, space for everyone to to show up, and if it's and when you show up and it resonates to a lot of people, it resonates. You can take something. <laughs> so it's something mm -hmm. like this. I haven't even been to a Gestalt conference, so I don't have this experience of. Uh, enjoying a conference and, and experiencing. So I would like to experience this in life, hopefully. Mm -hmm. So yeah, something like this. I'm uh, six years of practice, so it's not a lot of, 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 um, of practice. And as a Gestalt, as a therapist, even it, it, it's less, it's three years, for mm -hmm. example, or something yeah. like this. Uh, so now I'm grasping what really is this. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm in the middle age, I could say I'm transferring <laughs> for uh, this part. And when I have a, enough experience, I will go to the wise space and will be more <laughs> of a visionary and talking about this. And um, now I could say, yeah, I'm, I'm on this stage and it's, mm -hmm. it's exciting to explore more and to yeah, I think I'm really deeply in that stage right now, just seeing uh -huh, okay, what's there yes, yes. and what else uh -huh. is there and what else i don't have a vision yet yes yes okay that's amazing so thank you is there anything else you'd like to add 
It was really a pleasurable experience for me in uh, this interview, and I really enjoy connecting with myself. And so thank you for, for this space and um, for your presence. No, thank you. Thank you for reaching out. So it was nice to meet you. Yeah. So we'll <laughs> leave this here. Thank you. Thank you.